Hi, Amanda Armstrong. Welcome to the back office teardown lab. I've got a bulb here. And this was a really quite nice lamp I bought for my sons. Um, it basically is a rainbow changing LED type light that fits quite nicely in a socket. It's got a metal heat sink here. And I think that's actually glass lens, scarily enough. It's uh, two 40 volts, 50 hertz, three watts, an HG00197 by Owim Livarno Lux. Don't recycle it. Don't know why, You're not allowed to recycle it. Now, the problem is, I think this is glass. Oh, you're probably asking why am I thinking of dismantling it. Um, it doesn't work anymore, it did pop, because it, uh, I think it was using a dimmer. And also, my son lost the remote control on the very sort of first day of having it. So what I'm gonna do is try to get into it. And I think the only way might be to do that. Little bit of glass everywhere, that's fine. I'm sure when the kids are running around the back office in their bare feet, they will learn a lesson, won't they? I'm just going to put those pieces aside. So that's a quite nice though, it's really well made. I mean, that's a, ni a nice quality glass. Ugh. I wouldn't advise using your fingers or your unprotected eyes to do this. It's, ow! For that reason, I think I'm going to have to take this out and shake it later. So look at this, this is really lovely and I'm really annoyed that I had to break this. There's the infrared receiver because you had a, a number of RGB modes you could program this to. So you could have it red, white, blue, purple, any combination, and it would, you know, color cycle through those. It's really quite nicely made. It has how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve LEDs. And looking at the pins there, I think they're actually RGB LEDs each. It's not like there's some red, some blue, some whatever. Um, just trying to work out how to get further into this. I think we can probably just prise this off. It's a bit of glass going everywhere. Okay, so I can see what's going on. Oops. So we've stretched something out. Oh, there we go. Those wires are pressed in, so once you've got this far, you've pretty much knackered this. I mean, you've already smashed the glass on it, but let's assume you were... Tr There's no really legitimate way of getting into this. Um, wow! Wowie, wowie, wowie. See, the PCB has actually been assembled through that metal part. This is a die-cast piece, this heatsink. It's not an extrusion. And I guess it was clear it wouldn't be anyway from the outside, but you can see here these two legs, the power supply goes through that metal thing. So there's no way you're going to get this off unless you've got some advanced tools. So let's go get some, when I say advanced, no more advanced than a soldering iron. I'm back. I've got my trusty gas soldering iron. Here in the back office, we do have a full range of soldering and surface mount and everything, equipment. But you know, I really like these gas things. It, uh, it's very powerful, it gets very hot. The only downside is you have to watch out for this, see this little hole here? It's kind of like an exhaust hole, so whatever, if you've got your finger over that, you'll feel a lot of heat and you'll burn yourself. So I like to reserve those holes for working with heat shrink. While this is warming up, you know, I'm just continuing to pick glass from the counter. Right. Are we hot enough? Yes, we are. See how it just boshes it? This is definitely a brute force uh, tool. Don't use this for your sensitive PCB work. Luckily enough, the way they've mounted the solder here, that's sort of causing a bridge 
through 90 degrees on the PCB, when I'm melting it and the blob sticking to the soldering iron, it's, it's almost completely coming off the PCB, so you don't need any solder suckers. So I'm just going to turn this off, put it away. Right, with a bit of luck, it should just pop out. So the PCB is actually loose. The solder's not actually, it's, it's kind of mechanically holding it just because it can't get through. You can see here, yeah, see it's acting as a kind of a wedge so it won't go through the hole. So I'm just going to put pressure on it from behind and pulling on it while trying to heat the top. Looks like I might have to do a proper job of this and use solder braid. Let's just give it one last go. I'm just flicking it, melting the solder and just giving it a little flick. Come on, there we go, brilliant. So let's look at the power supply first. Good isolation really. It's going through the PCB. So there's complete isolation really between the heavy duty main side and the rest because the power is being transmitted through the transformer over these two Itty bitty wires. So you're not going to get an arc that's going to jump that sort of six mil. No, it's more, maybe eight mil gap. I guess these almost act like a fuse as well. If you if you get some issue here, those those are going to vaporize themselves. If you see some stabilization circuitry there, and then this one to mark ground int. VCC positive, something else that's been ringed. I think that this power supply actually might be operated via the infrared. So this is covered in thermal paste. Look at that. You can see that PCB is absolutely coated in it. In fact, I'm going to just give it a wipe because that stuff is kind of nasty to get onto things. There we go. Now I have a sneaky suspicion the entire brains of this light is actually on these chips. This chip here and there's some maybe power regulator something here because there's not much on here at all apart from the actual infrared. So let's have a let's have a bit of a closer look. This component here is marked as 78LO5. I think that's just a power regulator, a 5 volt regulator. The main chip that's doing the, the real stuff is actually hasn't got a label on it and I suspect it's a sort of a PIC 12 series and it's probably doing a PWM on the light. We'll never be able to test it now because it's gone. And looking how the PCB is arranged, when you actually plug this in, yep, it went this way. Okay, so the Ah, okay, so there we go. The VCC int and whatever, the other third mystery track that goes to this device, that device in a can probably has its own IC and everything in it for controlling the infrared. So it probably has a decoder in it and it's just sending a interrupt signal back. When it, like a stream. So, so there'll be some sort of data stream going back from that to the unit. I, I, I kind of think it will be, I think it will be doing the decoding in this rather than in the sort of pick. Who knows? It's not that important. And then the entire controlling of the LEDs is coming from the other pin. And you can see here BR, blue, red, plus, and then green. Yeah, G. There's a G there. It's a bit dirty, a bit underneath there. Red, RGB. Red, green, blue. 
power. So these are obviously on the ground side and then that's the plus. So if you just put power between the plus and the any of these, I'm sure the whole bank of LEDs would uh, light up. Do I have something to do that? Not really. I'm just going to try something because sometimes if you have a meter, Nah. Sometimes if you've got a meter or something with a bit of juice and you'll just put it over a single LED it'll glow, but you know, it's not in this case. But here, this is quite a nice PCB. I think what I will do, this PCB is going to live on my wall of curiosity or shelf of curiosity, but I don't really need this infrared thing because that's never going to be used again. I'm never going to decode that. But the LEDs and the RGB thing actually will be quite easy to hook up to something else. So if you've got these bulbs yourself, these lamps, and they die, I strongly suggest doing exactly what I'm doing and just keeping this bit because that might be fun in a project. And in fact, I'm going to keep that for that very reason. And I'll show you why in one of my later videos. So please feel free to comment down below and click subscribe and let me know if you've done anything interesting with these or dismantled them. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. As ever, thank you for watching.